Hi, folks. Welcome. All right. I'm going to give everyone another moment to log into Zoom before we get started. Oh my gosh, welcome everybody. Thanks so much for attending. I see these numbers rising. Welcome, welcome. All right, well, Welcome everyone. My name is Gianna. I'm one of the reference librarians here at the Chelmsford Public Library. And thank you so, so much for joining us for tonight's Declutter Series program with Jamie Novak, How to Organize Your Life into One Notebook. Go from scattered to successful this year with a single notebook. Join us online when organizer and author of Keep This, Toss That shows you how to organize your life with a single notebook. You'll be able to keep track of everything you need to get done and more. Yes, thank you, Jamie. Remember things, get organized, prioritize tasks, and stop misplacing important information. And for those who aren't familiar with Jamie, Jamie, our presenter, you may have seen her on Morning TV, read her newest book, Keep This Toss That, listened to her 10-minute podcast, or watched her YouTube show. Jamie spends most days presenting visual programs on how to de-stress and declutter with a humorous twist. When not on the computer, Jamie is clipping out recipes. So without further ado, um, actually, before I pass it on, um, your chat down the bottom of your Zoom menu is going to be important for tonight if you want to kind of participate along with us. So feel free to use that during the presentation with any questions you might have as well. Um, also, be on the lookout in the chat. Um, look out in the chat. I'm going to put the blog post from our website with all of the registration links for our upcoming series um, of programs with the Zoom links to register for those upcoming ones. So please take a look at that as well. Now I will turn it over to Jamie for our presentation. Well, thank you, Diana. It's great to be back. We are here the first Thursday of every month. Unless that Thursday falls on Independence Day, then it will be the second Thursday in July. And you'll see all that information in the chat and you'll be registering for each of those programs individually. So delighted to have you tuning in. And I'm guessing that I'm not the only one that has found myself with sticky notes and writing on the back of envelopes and little bits of paper with things I want to remember. Anyone else doing that? Jump in the chat if you want to let us know. Are you a keeper of all the notes? You've got scraps of paper and then it's not even just the little things we want to remember that we've written down, but then we promptly lose them. But then all the things we're trying to remember, remember this and remember that. And so I'm guessing that we're all here together going, yep, tons of scraps of paper. Diane's going, absolutely. Yes, this is that's me, the envelopes. I've written on the back of um, napkins, uh, even like edges of paper towels, trying to remember all the things. Now, Sharon says, I use my phone. And I love that Sharon is sort of embracing that technology and using her phone my phone is very rarely turned on. Um, I, if it's on, I don't even know if it's usually not even that charged. So it's not really like a me thing to be so tech-based, but I think our program tonight will really work beautifully. If you are more tech-based, there's still a good chance you're going to have some papers that need a place to go. And then, of course, for those of us that are less tech-based, we have all the papers. And so if you found yourself looking for that little scrap of paper with that little bit of information that you needed, wasting time. Oh, you're in the right program. I'm so very glad that you're here. We're going to begin by talking about choosing a notebook and what that might look like. You're probably thinking, this will be a great opportunity for me to go out and buy a new notebook. And it may, but I'm going to invite you to shop at home first. There's a really good chance you have a notebook just waiting to be used. Now, this isn't going to be the notebook that's too beautiful to write in. I have one with like pressed flowers and little gemstones. It's too nice to write in. That's like my decorative notebook. But then I have other notebooks. And so we're going to talk about the style of notebook that you might want to try. And I'll invite you to just give it a try and then see where it takes you. And you can always adjust. So we're going to look at a few different styles of notebooks. In fact, a three ring binder. 
a three ring binder might just be the more flexible solution if that's maybe the way that you want to go. And then we'll talk about how we set it up. And I'm going to give you so many ideas for different lists and ideas and notes and just little bits of things that you can capture in your notebook. So we'll look at that. It'll be a little slideshow presentation. And of course, we're always taking your questions and comments along the way. So great to see everyone. It apparently, we are having friends tune in from all over, which just leads me to believe that there's clutter everywhere. And we are just so delighted to be getting together for this declutter series. Welcome in. Well, here is my uh, day planner. Does anyone remember these? Do you still have one? Um, it was They were very popular for a really long time. And then, of course, with technology, they kind of maybe lost some of their popularity. But I'm still a really big fan. Uh, file of facts. Yes, Trish, exactly. So it has like those um, ring dividers. Kathy still has hers. Well, listen, Kathy, bring it out because... What's old is new again, and why not use it? So we can still get all the inserts, and this is my go-to. So um, this is one I've had for decades, and every time anyone, like if I'm in a, a room, a meeting or something, and someone sees my burgundy file of facts, my day planner, they know I'm here. Like they're up, oh, Jamie must be here somewhere because we see her planner. So this is the style that I've just used for years. It's large enough that I can write in a regular size handwriting without having to be too small, but it's somewhat small-ish to be portable enough. This is one style. If you already have one and you want to give it a go, because it has the binder with the three rings or, or more with the rings, I should say, it's very flexible, right? It allows you to put papers in and move things around. Um, and so many of you, oh no, now Joyce just let hers go. Doesn't that always happen? Well, Joyce, maybe that was a sign you needed a new one. Um, so you can use that, but a binder will work too. So a three ring binder, half size, right? or full size. So look in your office supplies and see what you've got and see if you might want to try the binder style. And the reason the binder style I think appeals to so many of us is that it's flexible. Now you may not know what style you want quite yet. And probably during our time together, you'll be able to make a more informed decision because you'll see how you might use it. So uh, this particular day planner is like half the size of a binder. I guess it's a little bit bigger, like maybe like a five by nine, right? So it's like that, about half the size. So that could certainly work. There's smaller ones too, if you want more of a pocket size. I think the benefit to the larger size is if you have some papers and you want to tuck them in, they'll have a place to go. And we'll talk about these in just a moment. You could go more with the pocket size. Maybe it's a bound journal smaller, like palm size. And this, of course, can tuck into your laptop bag, um, maybe even your back pocket. I don't know if you're carrying it around with you. Um, it depends, right? And so we're going to look at if you're using it as your calendar and for your to-do list, then yes, you may find yourself carrying it around with you. However, if it's more of like a stationary at home kind of a reference book, and you're using something else for your calendar, or you're more calendar on your phone kind of person, then it's not going to be so necessary to be portable because it's staying home. And could you use a spiral bound? Sure. Again, not as flexible, bound size, ring size, not as flexible, but still can work beautifully. I sort of switch on and off sometimes. I started with more of a spiral bound. I've gone back to my more flexible sort of Franklin planner, as DB says in the chat. And um, yeah, they're a little expensive for the planner size, but you know, you might just find one. And don't forget, you can always post a wanted ad on FreeCycle. Those buy nothing groups like FreeCycle, F-R-E-E cycle.org, FreeCycle. And you can say, does anyone have a planner they're giving away? And there's a really good chance someone is. Um, unless they're here with us tonight, then they're like, nope, I'm not giving it away because now I'm going to use mine. So let's see how we can really maximize our notebook so that we can gather all those little bits of information that are currently scattered all over, including scattered in our brains, trying to remember all the stuff. And what can we do with that?
So many exciting ideas. So we're going to begin by looking at sort of how we can start our notebook. And I would begin by choosing one and just going with it. And you may want to adjust later on, but there's never going to be a perfect notebook. Believe me, I've tried to find one. We're just going to make it work for you. And what are we kind of talking about here? Well, what about all those day trip ideas that you have? And you've got all the brochures and you're like, well, um, we have some time to go on a day trip but I don't remember where we wanted to go. So listing things like day trip ideas or you receive a wedding invitation. So you're creating a list of wedding dates and anniversaries and birthdays so that you can add them to your calendar, put them in your phone, remember when these things come up. So many different ideas and ways we can use this notebook. We're gonna look at a whole bunch of them together right now. The most recent way that I used mine was to add a page where I can put paint colors. So we just repainted the bathroom, uh, chose a color of blue that's like a spa blue and it's called watery. I will never remember that. I only remember it now because it just happened, but ask me a year from now, I'll never remember. And so that's the type of thing that I'm imagining you could collect in this single notebook. First of all, it just gives us confidence that if we wanted to recall it, we can. And I think for me, it just makes me feel better that I have the information. Will I ever reference it? Will I ever need to know that the bathroom is painted the color watery? Maybe, but probably not. But again, it makes me feel better. There's so much in life that is out of our control. And the fact that we can gather a little notebook and keep our little notes, and then if we want to reference them, and then when we need to reference them, they're right there for us. So very excited. Now, some of you are saying, well, I keep a separate notebook for different categories. You absolutely can. Um, however, if I were to keep one notebook for every one of these categories, I'd have about 150 notebooks. And sometimes it's just a bit of information. So I love that we're sort of taking this idea and making it our own, getting very flexible with it. So let's take a look at sort of a list and, and I, some ideas. Now, I'm gonna walk you through these. This is not in any way intended that you're going to do each one of these lists, right? So much of this, you're going to say, don't need it. Yeah, probably not. And then hopefully there's going to be one, three, five that you're going to go, that's going to be a game changer for me. That's the list I need. Oh, I wish I would have thought of this a while ago. I'm so glad I'm seeing this now. This is going to help me going forward. So it's not intended to overwhelm you with like, oh, you should be making all of these lists. It's meant to say, here's a list idea. Hey, if you need that one, this would be a great place to put it. So let's take a look at our notebook, how we can set it up, what's all going to happen with it, and of course, where we're going to put it so we don't lose it. All right, let's take a look at our presentation. And here we go. This is how to organize our life into one notebook. Are you ready to go? Let's get started. And first, we've got to choose a notebook. We just have to choose a notebook. So maybe one that you already own. Again, if you're more um, committed to the idea of it being small and portable, if you'd like the flexibility, one of the other reasons that I really do enjoy the fact that I can open my ringed binder and take some pages out is I can archive them. So I have the current one that I'm using today, but then when the pages are maybe a little bit older, finished up, but I maybe want to remember them, I can put them right into another binder and save that. So that's sort of my archive binder. And then I have the one I'm currently using. So the very first thing we need to do is to choose that notebook. And so shop at home. There's a really good chance you've got a notebook or maybe you're going to treat yourself to a brand new one. Once we've selected our notebook, I would invite you to note the start date. And so whether this goes on the front cover or the inside of the front cover, somewhere that you can give yourself a start date, because sometimes I'll look back and go, wait, was this my most current notebook? I'm not quite sure. And if you've started a bunch of them through the different years, this would be great to just say, this is going to be my one notebook for all these various categories, and I'm going to need a date. So we can give it a start date, or we can call it a birthday. Um, give your notebook a birthday. From there, we have to give it a home. Otherwise, you're going to put all the really neat and helpful information in the notebook, and then potentially 
promptly lose the notebook and that would not be ideal. So to give yourself the confidence that you can recall the information and find it when you need it, we must give the notebook a home. So unless I'm using it, my notebook has one place to live. And so for me, it's right next to the side of the desktop computer because I'm often doing a lot of things on the computer where the notebook is super handy. And it's also where I usually am when I wanna add something to the notebook. So it just has like a little stand right there. It sits right next to the, the computer and it's super simple. So you might find that the end table drawer in the living room is most convenient. Maybe you wanna put it in the kitchen, in the pantry, on the shelf right next to the first box of crackers, uh, but we need to give it a home and then put it back when we're done so we can find it again. And if you promptly lose things and you're thinking, oh, those ideas sound great, but I probably won't put it back, I'm not opposed to the idea of you putting it on a bit of a leash. So this would look like, you know, putting it with a little bit of a ribbon tied somewhere, of course, up high so it's always safe. Um, but that way, it, let's say you tethered it to the pantry shelf way up high, then you can't lose it. So give it a home is a great strategy. And from there, we're going to give it a name if you'd like to. Now, this is getting a little fun. Um, my notebook's name is Lily because there's a Lily on the cover. And so I'm just like, if I'm ever looking for Lily, everyone in the house is helping me look for Lily. And um, so if you want to give it a name, you absolutely can. And it just makes it a little more fun when we're getting our organizing is happening. So we give it a name. And from there, let's take a look at some categories. So if you are using a notebook that has rings, you could add in A to Z tabbed dividers. And then under L for listen or P for podcast or S for songs or R for radio stations, you could make a list. Now, if your notebook doesn't allow to have the A to Z tabs, like maybe it's a bound journal or a composition marble notebook or a spiral bound book, you can add tabs. They actually make tabs that just stick on. So you could make tabs or you could just create a little index in the front of the notebook. One of the things that I thought about when I started my notebook was how many pages should I leave open for a certain category? And because I didn't know, the whole thing got really out of control very quickly. So probably the easiest way if you're using a bound book is to just create an index. Page one is playlists and page two is radio stations and page three is something totally different. And then you can go ahead and look at your index if you're not using little tabs or if it doesn't allow for A to Z tabbed dividers. So again, we're gonna look at a variety of topics and hopefully you're jotting down some ideas or if your notebook's there and you wanna start your pages with us, please do. I think the most important thing is to just get started and then it sort of falls into place like, oh, I should do this. So there are podcasts. Maybe someone suggests a podcast to you or someone else says, oh, we should try this podcast. In fact, I have a podcast. You can find it at jamienovak.com. There are soundtracks and songs and radio stations. So this could go under L for listen or just simply under P for podcasts. So let's pause for a moment and just be sure that everyone is all set. And um, oh my gosh, this is hopefully it sounds like really becoming the thing for all of us to go, you know what? I did have that bit of information and it would be perfect to add it here. So I'm very excited to see in the chat that so many of you are going, yes, this is fantastic. And so of course, some of those apps for list making, there's a fee or you can run out of storage space. And um, listen, your notebook is just gonna keep going. So it depends on if you kind of wanna pull this into paper-based. Let's take a look at our presentation again. We are looking at that listen page. So if you're thinking, well, I never really, you know, need a list of individual songs, but I'm always keeping track of new podcast ideas. This would be a great place to list it. Could it also be a note on your phone? Sure. But if you run out of storage space on your phone, which is what we'll be discussing next month, if you can join us the first Thursday of next month, um, but this would be a great place to keep this list. Let's take a look at some others. And how about 
some pages about eating, restaurants to try or restaurants that you like. I have a friend who's always saying like, oh, you've got to try this restaurant. If you go to this restaurant, try this. So where would I put that information? Right into the notebook would be a wonderful option. And then restaurants to skip. If you've tried them and they're just not your favorite, you wouldn't want to go back. Sometimes I forget. Did I try them? Did I like it? Or your favorite dish at specific restaurants. So some of this you just know, some of it you don't need to track, but if you'd like to track this information and you didn't have a great place of keeping it because we're just writing it on the back of random envelopes and then losing it in our house, our notebook can be just the place. And of course, when you're planning to go out, this would be the page that you could refer to and go, oh, okay, we're going here and this is what I'd like to order. And the great news is if you go to the restaurant, you forget what you wanted to order, just order something new and it's going to be okay. But if it brings you comfort in being able to track this information, then this is one awesome way to do it. Let's take a look at our next page. And so many of us coming together through the awesome library, right? Um, we are big readers. And so what about books to read or a list of books that you have read or books that you read for a book club or great book club book ideas? Now, if you don't go to a book club, if you don't envision yourself ever going to a book club, then you don't need this page. So this is really just to spark your imagination about pages that might be super helpful. It is in no way intended for you to write down every single one of these and make every single one of these pages. How about your favorite authors? Sometimes someone will say to me, oh, if you love Sandra Brown, then you should try this author. And then I promptly forget that information. And book quotes. Sometimes I read something and I'm like, oh, that's such a great quote. I want to remember that. And so writing it in the book. And here's the thing. We don't always have to write directly into our notebook. It's very possible that you're still going to write things on a scrap of paper. You can tape it into your notebook. Or if you write on sticky notes like I do, I could just take the sticky note and stick it onto the right page. So it's very flexible in that way. And now from our reading page, Let's take a peek at what comes next, making and baking. This is the page that always makes me a little bit hungry. Um, so go to meals. Again, you may know this. You may say, well, it makes more sense for me to keep my favorite recipe tacked to the inside of the pantry cabinet door because that's where I am when I need it. Fantastic. But someone else is probably thinking, you know what? My pantry doors are cluttered. I don't want to put tape on them. I want to put this in my notebook. And so go-to meals or favorite recipes. Maybe you've got a bit of a meal plan. Sometimes there'll be like a, a little cutout from a magazine or a printout from online. It's like, here's a great, you know, 10-day meal plan reset. I don't know if I'm doing it or not, but if I want to keep the information, this would be a great place to put it. How about a pantry inventory? So if you're trying to make sure that you have everything in your pantry, maybe especially around the holiday time, you can come to your list and check your pantry and then make your shopping list or a master grocery shopping list. So when you're like, oh, what am I missing? We can refer back to our list. And one that I use all the time is substitutions. So I now know like putting flaxseed with apple seed, applesauce can be a substitute for an egg for my father who's vegan. Well, didn't know that before, learned it. Where would I put that so I could remember it again? And on my make or bake page could be perfect. Or under S in your alphabetized list for substitutions. From here, let's take a look at our next one. And there's about 20 of these pages. We've gone through a lot already, but just to set the expectation, there's about 20 of these pages. So what about watching? Shows, movies, or streaming channels? So do you pay for particular streaming channels? Would having a list of that be helpful to know when the subscriptions are up or when you need to renew? Movies or shows? So many times someone will say, oh, you've got to watch this show. Have you watched this show yet? And then I write it down and I promptly forget. Or I don't know where to find it. Which streaming channel is it on? So movies and shows and streaming channels, what you like to watch. And from our watch page, we can move right into our fun page. So many of us have maybe collections. And so do you know which one you're missing if you're trying to create a complete collection? 
And then you're shopping and you're trying to find that one to complete your collection. Maybe it's a collection of plates or spoons and you need one more. Which one is it? How about crafts, a supply inventory or the crafts that you want to do? So when it's time to craft, you know what's in that back closet or completed crafts. So if you are a crafter, I'm a big baker and I keep a list of the cakes that I baked. I bake all the cakes for people's birthdays and their holidays and things. And I like to remember what I made, what flavors they like, which designs I did. Hobbies, how to's, you know, maybe there's a little tip or a hint and you're like, oh, that's great. The next time I go to do my resin art projects, here's a little hint to make it go a little smoother. Where would I put that? Right here in the notebook could be an option. And do we have any gardeners? Dump in the chat. Are you a gardener? Give us a G in the chat if you're a gardener. Do you need a seed inventory or a calendar of when you planted things? Timelines or what your crops yielded? How many tomatoes or just general tips? Things like that. Looks like we've got a lot of gardeners. I see that chat lighting up with the Gs. I love it. And so anything that can make your gardening a little easier, right? When did you do things? How did it go? What would you do again? What did you plant? What would you never do again? Let's take a peek at our next one. And this would be special times. So maybe you're moving or considering moving. Maybe a moving page would be helpful. All of your notes to yourself and someone suggested a moving company or said, oh, I would probably not use that moving company. So this could be a great one. Or maybe you have a teenager that's going on a college search and we're going to be applying. And what does that look like? And again, someone recommends a website to you. Someone says, oh, you should try this app. How do we collect all of that information? And family members. And by that, I mean, maybe you're assisting a family member with their bills or running their home or a transition that they're making. Maybe they're paring down and moving to an active adult community. And so if you're helping a family member, they might need a page so that you've got all their information and notes in one place. So moving or college search, family members, those special moments. We'll take a peek at the next one. And this one is a little um, larger, right? So just take take a moment and take a look. Again, I don't think you need all of these pages, but I do think there's a page here that you're gonna go, that would be amazing. I would love to have that page. So for me under favorites, I always forget the brands of makeup that work well for me. I'm very sensitive to it. And I also forget which model number, like, so I know the name, but I don't know like, NW20 or NW30. I forget which exact shade. So favorites could be great. I think my favorite list that I refer to all the time from all the ones listed here is quantities. So under entertaining or under party, again, wherever you would look for it, I do quantities because my sister is like kind of the entertaining house, but I always help her a lot of times with the party planning. And she'll say to me, where did we get those sandwiches? We're having this many people. How many did we get last time? Did we have enough soda? Did we run out? Did we use an extra bag of chips? Where did we get that from? What time did we pick it up? You know, all of that. And now I just made a list because every time we were trying to reinvent the wheel, making a whole new list, when in fact we had made a list that we could just save, but you have to save it somewhere that you can reference it again. So entertaining. How about just general notes? If you tend to watch a particular morning talk show and you always remember that there was a chef on there or they did an interview with someone and you're like, I know I saw it on that show because that's the show I watch every day, but then we don't remember. And you're like, oh, I wanted to get that cookbook out of the library instead of rushing out and buying our own copy. But then we can't remember. So notes, little hints that they talk about, things that would be great. Or maybe you belong to a club. And you go to meetings and you want to remember things, people's names. So little club meeting notes. The three on the bottom really get us into celebration mode. So gifts and gift list, ideas of what to give or lists of what you have given. Maybe you have a gift shelf and you'd like to keep an inventory of it. I keep a list of favorites, favorite things, fa um, sizes, ideas. And that way I don't have to always bother like my sister when I'm shopping in the store of like, oh, what size is this? Who needs that? 
which one of the kids likes this particular character. Holidays, again, gift list or a tipping guide. Do you give gift cards or cash at the holiday season? And then every year we're trying to make the same list again. And we don't want to forget someone and we want to remember what we gave them last year. And so that tipping guide could be just the thing. How about places to go at certain times of year? Maybe there's craft fairs you like to go to. Um, over here in New Jersey, where I am today, there's like a cider mill and every couple of seasons, they allow you to come in and tap your own maple syrup, but I never remember the name of the place. And so I've got that because it's at a particular time of year. There's also a beautiful wedding venue and around the holiday season, they light all the fires throughout their property, like in their fire pits. And you can walk around and there's Dickens carolers and there's free sugar cookies and free hot cocoa and there's events going on and it's just so festive and beautiful with the lights and the greenery. But then sometimes I can't remember the name of the place, even though I just went there last year. And so again, places to go or a holiday card list. Do you send cards? Do you send e-cards? Who do you send them to? So these types of lists could be helpful. And of course, birthdays and anniversaries. So one of the things that I tuck in my notebook is all about the greeting card prompts. So sometimes I'll go to write a card, especially if it's a difficult card to write, like a sympathy card, and I'm never really sure what to write. And then because I don't know what to write, I don't send the card. And then I feel bad that I didn't send the card in a timely manner, but it's really because I was waiting to figure out what I wanted to write. So I have greeting card prompts, beautiful words that I've seen that inspire me or that I've written before that I can duplicate in a card um, or that just gets me going so I can get the card out the door. So let's do a little check-in. How are we feeling about these lists? I, I think for some of us, it can be on the side of the scale that feels like, oh my gosh, am I supposed to be making all these lists? So I just want to remind you, absolutely not. I love the idea of just sort of, oh, that list would be great. Oh, I could use that list, but we're not trying to make all of the lists. Raylene says, I'm loving them. Yes. And Leanne says, I'm a list maker. So this just really validates me. Can't wait to get started. Diane says, genius. Listen, that is a high compliment. And it's, I think it's why the library lets me keep coming back. Um, so I love it. Yes. Oh, so many great lists. And listen, Jump in chat as I'm sharing. If you create a list or you it, one of my list ideas prompts you to think of one, jump in chat. Let us know, um, and and this way we can you know make even more lists. You're going to inspire us. So this is awesome. Um, Tanya says, "What about having lists of sales that certain stores do at certain times of the year?" Oh yes, totally. And um, sometimes I'll keep a list of things that I just need like all the time, you know, like aluminum foil. So if I'm trying to get to free shipping for on online ordering, I could just order something that I know I always need just to get to that free shipping. I love it. All right, well, these sound like they're really um, hitting home for so many of us. We've got a lot more to chat about. Lorraine says, a place for everything. That's exactly it. Excited to get started. Oh, Maureen's got more ideas. Here we go. All right, so let's continue on. I'm thinking we're all so inspired by this. I certainly am very excited. Oh my gosh. It's just when you feel like you can save something you think you're going to need and then find it again, that's the important part. So I love it. All right. Let us continue on. And yes, the three ring notebook. It's super simple. We love it. All right. Let's take a peek. We're gonna continue on and here we go. Are we ready? So we took a look at this one. It had quite a bit of information and we will move on from this one now and bring you into passwords. Now, you may have a place for passwords. You may not wanna put passwords in a binder that you're carrying around with you, but if it's staying at home or if you're just keeping a list to stay at home, then passwords. And I would suggest that you don't cross out the old password. Maybe put a line through it, but don't scribble it out because if you scribble out the old password, then sometimes they'll ask you, what's the password that you remember that you used last? And if you scribbled it out, we're out of luck. So I jot down the date that I changed the password and I draw a line through it, but I don't ever scribble it out. So passwords could be a good one. If it goes in your notebook, if you carry your notebook, you might prefer not to, 
But if you carry your notebook and you always know where your notebook is, then maybe you want it because if you're out and about and need a password, it's helpful. This one's one of my favorites, celebrating your accomplishments. Just a yay, I did it list. So where else are we collecting all of our awesome achievements? And if you're not, this could be just the place to do it. We're celebrating our accomplishments. So maybe one page um, where you're doing for the year or you know two pages, uh, whatever, whatever's going on, jot it down. What did you accomplish, big or small? Celebrating your wins. So that you can look back and go, wait a minute, you know, I wasn't sure this particular week or month or year was really productive, but you look back and go, wait, I decluttered that. I attended each of those programs on the first Thursday of every month. I, um, you know, got up and did this physical accomplishment. I crafted two things and made a quilt and all the cool stuff. So celebrating your wins, a yay, I did it page. And so this is where you can bring in markers and highlighters and stickers and really get fun with it or keep it simple, straightforward, just a list, nothing but a list and keep it simple or anything in between. Let's take a look at thankful for. So you may have been gifted a gratitude journal. Maybe you purchased a gratitude journal. Maybe you've read an article or saw a news program about how beneficial for our mental health and happiness, gratitude journals can be, and I've tried them, and then I failed because it was really hard to keep up with it every single day. So for me, incorporating a thankful for page in the notebook made it so much easier because I can open it up and just add one or two things, maybe three, and it feels like I'm doing the gratitude journal, but in a way that works for me. So a thankful for page might just really suit you. And how about journaling pages or milestones? So again, don't need all the pages, but if you're like, huh, I've seen those like one line a day journals where I'd like to try that. Well, make a section in your notebook, start one line per day. And it's just the idea of like today this happened. And then you kind of look back and you have a whole history of the month, of the year or milestones. You know, again, just noting like, I met this achievement. Uh, maybe there was a, a new family member that was born. So, you know, tracking those milestones, again, just to kind of look back and see a little history. So journal pages or milestones. And then, of course, to-do lists. So I don't think that all of us will be using this singular notebook to also incorporate our to-do lists but I think some of us might want to. So if it's more like the Filofax day planner style that also has like a calendar included, you could print out a free calendar. You may have a calendar that you can just kind of take the pages apart and put them into your notebook. So some way of adding maybe a month calendar and then a daily to-do list from there. And if you're thinking, mm, you know what, if I put it in my notebook, I'm never going to look at it because I'm thinking more of this notebook as like a reference piece, but not so much like I'm looking at it daily, then don't put your list in there because you'll never look at them. But if you're thinking, hmm, you know what, I'm going to give that a try. I'm going to pop in my to-do list. Now, it doesn't have to be its own page. You don't have to use a page for a list. You could just tack the list to the front. So using something like a binder clip, so you could clip your notebook, um, your, your list to the front page of the notebook. Or if you have sort of the binder size and it has that clear pocket that's on the cover of your three ring notebook, you could slide your to-do list for the day in there. And that way it's always there. It's You're looking at it the whole day long and then you add the next one for the next day or do a weekly to-do list, right? So this would allow you to keep your to-do list here if you wanted to, but you do not have to. So it's sort of like a, will it work for me? Won't it? And if you're not quite sure, try it. And if it works great, then run with it. And if it's a not so much for me, then we pivot and do your to-do list, maybe the way you're doing it now, or possibly, possibly on a clipboard. I love a to-do list on a clipboard. And so that way you can't really lose it, but it's also out all the time. So if you need a solution for a to-do list and it's not the notebook, you might try popping it on a clipboard. And here we'll continue on with some more ideas. 
let's take a look at these because professional. So maybe you would have the opportunity to update your resume. But when you go to update your resume, you forget all the things you wanted to include, like job duties and accomplishments you've had. Or maybe someone says, if you ever need a reference, use me. And you're like, that's so nice. Thank you so much. I would love to use you as a reference. And then when you need a reference, your mind goes blank as to who you could use as a reference. Well, a reference list. And awards and certifications, if you want to remember what you accomplished when you were certified in something. Um, this would be great. Also, I'm thinking as a professional, if you need to keep up your you know, um, credits, like your continuing education credits for things, this would be a great place to note that as well. And then cheat sheets. I'm always using these. Something like a how to fix the remote, because if I push the wrong button, the remote doesn't work. And I have to push a series of letters and numbers to make it work again. So fix the remote so that I can fix it myself and don't have to call someone in the family. Or upload photos. So maybe someone's shown you how to upload a photo into an email and then you forget. So now it's like, well, let me write it down as they do it so I can do it again on my own. I use the cheat sheet often for how to put double-sided paper into the printer. If I want to print double-sided, I always put the paper in wrong and then it prints double on one side and nothing on the other. And then I waste the paper and the ink. And then I'm just upset because I'm like, I should remember this. So I've got my cheat sheets and social media posts or anything else to remember like how to do something. And genealogy. Whether or not you are actively engaged in your family tree right now, there's possibly um, an opportunity to open up that Ancestry.com account. That's the free and maybe the largest um, online family tree maker. If you opened an Ancestry.com account, where's the login information? And maybe you or a future generation or someone else might want to pick up and add timelines and dates and names. So this would be the place to put that in so that someone, maybe you or someone else, could add this information, genealogy. So you're like, oh yes, so-and-so graduated in this day, or I know they lived in this house at this time. Give us the addresses, but where does that go? And you might think, well, I've got a file in cabinet and I'll make a file folder for genealogy. Fantastic, you know, that's another great option. But for so much of this, there's only one or two bits of information. A file folder doesn't always seem all that practical. So that's why this is such a flexible idea. Let's take a look at our last few as we are coming to the end of the slideshow portion. And how about inventories? So if you're trying to declutter your home and take a look at what you've got, gift wrap or a gift shelf, we looked at that at holiday time, but it would be an inventory item. So under I for inventory or under G for gift shelf. So what do you have on hand? Do you need to buy anything new? And what about What's in a bank deposit box? Did you put papers in a bank deposit box? Or do you have a watertight safe at home, a fire resistant safe at home? What's in there? So you could go look, but if you're looking for something and can look at your list, you'll know whether or not it's in there. And then we have this little barometer uh, meant to sort of depict the idea of a tracker. And so if you want to track things like your steps in a day or how many walks you've taken or whether or not you watered that particular plant, um, those a lot of the air plants that just survive on air need to be dunked in water or soaked in water at a particular moment. So a tracker here could be great. I tend to track my online orders. So if you order from online and you're like, well, three boxes should be arriving. Did they arrive? This would be a great way to know whether or not they did. So tracker pages might be really helpful. And so this is where you can get super fancy. You could actually draw a little thermometer like is shown on the screen, and then maybe you're trying to save money. So for every $100 you save, you color in a portion of the thermometer. You could do trackers where there's little boxes and you check them off, or you add stickers to the inside of your planner and you get a gold sticker for every day that you you know do your 10 minutes of decluttering, let's say, if that's a goal, right? Or every time you add one thing into a box to donate and then get the box out the door. So trackers can be a lot of fun and that's where you can bring in a lot more color or design if you want to. And no pressure, you certainly don't have to. Here's another fun one. We've got our little pet paws here and shopping. So where I bought it. There's a particular bath mat that I really like from one particular um, catalog company. 
And then when I need to replace it, I'm always like, what was, where did I get that? What was that again? So item numbers or your favorites, or maybe even more importantly, what you didn't like. Because honestly, if you didn't like it, sometimes that's more important than remembering that you liked it. And I'm like, wait, did I try that? And then I'll get it again and go, yep, I tried it. I remember now, didn't like it. So, and for our pets, if they're microchipped, uh, vet information, care tips, or just websites like www.bringfido.com. And that's the one that based on your zip code shows you all the places you can bring your little puppy. Um, but how would we remember that? So that might be one as well. And how about visiting places? We looked at those brochures at the beginning of our time together. So bucket lists, travel ideas, you're just sort of daydreaming or day trips you do want to take, fairs you want to visit, festivals you enjoy going to. So all of this information under a D for day trips or V for vacation or V for visit um, or B for bucket list. And honestly, you can do a bucket list, right? All the things that you want to accomplish this year or in a lifetime and just make it a, a dream page. And of course, if you are traveling, we may have some summer travel coming up, house sitter information or pet sitter information, a packing list, a list of things to leave for the pet sitter, a before I leave checklist. So you remember, oh, that's right. Before I leave, these are the six things I want to do so I can go and feel confident that I've remembered everything. And I know that things like your frequent flyer number and stuff, it's usually just in the computer. You log in and it's there. But the next time you go to plan travel, keep a list of what you're planning and how you're planning it. And then if it's in your notebook, you can just do it again next time. You don't have to reinvent. There may also be car services that you particularly like. And of course, for our home. Now, you might say, Jamie, there's so much related to my home. Um, if you own your home or you rent your home, that this would be its own you know, three ring binder or its own file folder in a filing cabinet. But if it's just a little bit of stuff and, oh, I see a typo there. Sorry about that. We'll, we'll fix that for you. But we're looking at home and things like checklists or resource lists, maintenance schedules. We talked about my watery color, pink color. What about the alarm code or the doorbell code? Do you have one of those fancy doorbells that has a code when you need to reset it? Light bulb sizes, measurements. How about the model air filter for the air conditioner? If you don't remember it, this could be a great place to put it. So all of the different things, listing items that are under warranty or things that you spring clean, things that you fall clean and medical. Now we probably have file folders for medical information. And you may find that you want one binder for each family member for their medical. And that's going to have their reports and the doctor's business cards and all that other information. But if there's not a lot going on medically, and I hope that there's not, then maybe one little page is all you need. A timeline of like, oh, broke my toe on that day. Um, you know, family history, current doctor, maybe a list of prescriptions or supplements you're taking. And again, it's sort of more of an at a glance. Yes, there may be more information in a file folder. There may be more information in a medical binder if you're going to keep your own like medical binder. But this is the idea of like kind of at a glance, right? At a glance. This is where I also keep the list that is the form that almost every physician has you fill out, like family history and all the dates. I fill it out once, I make a copy and I put it here because the next time I have to fill it out, I don't have to remember it again. It really does clear that like mental clutter and gives us the confidence that we can recall what we're looking for. Of course, if you have a vehicle, you may want to track service dates. We just had an issue with our car insurance and I needed information right then. I needed the VIN, the license plate, the year, make, model of the car. And I was able to turn to the page in the book and everything was there. So under C for car or A for auto or V for vehicle, if you have an easy pass here in New Jersey, we've got easy pass. That easy pass number is on the tag that's in the car and it's nowhere else. So if the car is not in the driveway and I need it, this is my place to find it. My alarm has a code. If my battery dies, my alarm doesn't work. So the radio also, you need to plug in a code for the radio to work again. What size is the battery for the key fob? Well, that would be great to know. So you don't have to try to figure it out again. And something as simple as the wiper blade size or the tire size for which vehicle. Sure, you can Google it. Yes, you can look it up. It's absolutely going to be in the manual for the car that we may or may not know where it is. But at a glance, how great to open up the page and go, oh, 
We did the oil change. Yep, we just did the wiper blades at a glance. And here's money. So making a list of certain things can, again, bring us peace of mind. How many of us just did our taxes? Pop in a T for taxes if you're in the process of it. If you just did your taxes, if you're thinking about doing your taxes, jump in chat with a T for taxes. Wouldn't it have been so much easier to have a tax filing checklist? These are the six documents I need to take. This is the pin to log in to do my own taxes. This is where I go. Tax checklist. These are the 10 documents I need. This is the username and password that I used a year ago and totally forgot about. A tax filing checklist. Due dates at a glance to look and say, these are the 10 accounts and these are the dates that they're due. Or just an account list. These are our five investment accounts. A list of credit cards. We don't have to write down the whole account number and everything, but if you're like, okay, we've got six credit card accounts. Here are the last four digits for each one of them. Cardholder benefits. Did you even know that sometimes a cardholder benefit includes a free tow of a car within a certain radius or free upgrades at a concert? All sorts of benefits, like one of my cards, if I buy an electronic or a device that has a warranty, I don't have to buy the extended warranty. Just by purchasing it with that credit card, it gives me an extended warranty. But I have to remember that. And I don't want to have to call the 800 number every time. EFTs stands for electronic fund transfers. So at a glance, do you know every month or quarterly or yearly what gets drafted out of your bank account or what gets charged to a credit card? What if you had to change your account number because there was some sort of fraud suspected on a bank account or a credit card? Would you have to go back through every statement to look up to see what gets drafted out? Or at a glance, could you look at your list and say, we've got to contact these six people because they're going to go to draft the money and it's going to be wrong. Let's update it. Super simple that way. Very organized. A wallet inventory. What do you carry in your wallet? That way, if your wallet goes missing or worse, You'll, you'll know what was in there. And subscriptions. So what do you subscribe to? A magazine? Hopefully not. You can read the magazine at the library or digitally, but if you love to get it, or other subscriptions, gym subscriptions and things. How many? When are they up? And that way you know. Where did I put it? This might be one of the pages. Again, I tell you, I use so many of them, but this one may be more than any other. Where did I put it? And so this is the page where if I'm moving something in my home that I know I'm going to need, but there's a really good chance I'll forget where I put it, I list it. So I just moved the bread machine out of the kitchen. I need the space for the ice cream maker. Probably not going to make ice cream, but I have high hopes. But I don't have space for both of them. So I had to move out the bread maker. The bread maker is sitting in the cooler. Will I remember that? I don't need the cooler right now, but I probably won't remember. So I wrote down bread machine in cooler. So that way, when I'm like, where did I put the bread machine? I won't be tempted to buy another one or spend a day looking for it. I can check my where did I put it list. And of course, our awesome, awesome library. What a fantastic page to add. Our Fantastic. Our just We have our address, we have our phone number, and all of the services. So printing, copying, scanning, faxing. You probably knew, but in case you didn't, museum passes and a library of things. You can borrow things from the library. What if you were to list the things that you could buy from the library so that when you went to buy it, you could check to see if you could borrow it from the library first. And of course, the library no longer has notary services, but there are notary services by appointment at no cost at the senior center. So if you needed a notary and you're like, oh, where can I find a notary? Under N for notary or under the library page, it would refer you to where you can get a notary. I mean, how awesome is that? Again, saving the money, saving the time, saving the time of looking it up yet again, frustrating ourselves. So we're coming to the end of our program. We'll wrap up in just a moment. We do hope to see you on May 2nd, again at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And that's going to be digital decluttering, organize and free up storage space. That's May 2nd. So mark your calendar. You will need to register for each of these programs independently. 
And we're going to get, I know Gianna's on top of it. She's so good with the chat. Thank you. She's going to pop in the information about how to register. So this is May 2nd at 7 p.m. And if you're interested, do mark your calendar for all the upcoming. It's an entire series that brings us through the end of the year. We're going to do a great storage clean out and teeny tiny summer tidy ups. What to do and how to appraise your items on August 1st. September 5th is bathrooms and kitchens. And then we're going to sort out our photos and clean out our clothes closet and how to tidy up before companies on the way. And that'll be on December 5th. I'm sure we have a handful of questions and I have one more page that I'd love for you to add to your notebook. So stay tuned for that. As we wrap up, please do fill out the program survey. The link will be in the chat and we absolutely appreciate and look at your feedback. So we are going to add that link into the chat in case you can join us with by filling out that survey. We would very much appreciate it. And I'm gonna take a peek and answer those questions. And I'm also gonna tell you the one final page that I think you're gonna love the most. So get ready. You probably know me most for decluttering, right? Decluttering our homes and our lives and our minds. And that's just what this program was all about. The uh, book is Keep This, Toss That, published by Reader's Digest. And so when you've joined me for other organizing programs, you probably have taken down some resources, just a handful of resources that I've shared with you that it's like, oh, that would be really good information. So the final page, as we're wrapping up our time together, is the page on organizing resources. D for decluttering, C for clutter, D for donate, O for organizing, J for Jamie, however you're gonna remember it, this is the page that I'm gonna invite you to start right now. And this is gonna be our organizing page. So do you remember, if you joined us last month, I told you that Staples and Best Buy stores accept consumer electronics for recycling all year round. Seven items per person per day for electronic recycling. That's Staples and Best Buy stores. Well, that would be an awesome one to put on your resource page because then when you're like, oh, what can I do with this? Oh, I know, look at my list. Staples and Best Buy stores. Now from there, we're going to write down givebackbox.com, givebackbox.com. And that's the one where www.give, G-I-V-E, back, B-A-C-K, box, B-O-X, givebackbox.com. You can print a free shipping label, fill the box with items to donate, and then send it off through the post office or drop it off at a Kohl's store. And so givebackbox.com takes stuffed animals and they take socks and they take a lot of things that other places don't take. So this could be really, really helpful. And so as we are collecting information and resources from the upcoming programs, you'll be filling in your page. And we just started that together right now. All right, well, let's pop into the chat. My best guess is we have overlooked a few quick questions. So we're gonna circle back to those. Um, Gianna's gonna help me to see what we may have missed. And we are going to continue on. All right. Oh, if you're um, looking for email, we're gonna be talking about email and um, decluttering. But basically next to the send button, there's usually a little arrow up. And instead of clicking send, you'll click the arrow and choose a date and time in the future. Um, yes, during our filing program, we addressed like how to file. So I hope that's really helpful. I see all the lovely comments um, coming in. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I can't react to each of the comments. It's not letting me, but I do see them. And thank you so much for leaving kind comments. It's unfortunate um, when people feel them necessary to leave unkind comments. So we really do appreciate all the lovely comments you're reading, uh, reading out for us. And here is the evaluation if you'd like to take it. Um, do you recommend uh, using a, a bound notebook? Because again, some sections need more or less. So this is where if you're using that bound um, information in that book, I would say an index because you can't possibly gauge how many pages you'll need to leave 
So if you like to be more flexible, um, something that pops open like a, with a ring binder would probably be better. Otherwise, just go to the next page and then give yourself an index at the beginning. So that's wonderful. All right. And let's see, what about using a spiral notebook? Absolutely. Um, yeah. So it would open up and you've got your list showing the progress. I love that, Andrew. Listen, it's whatever works for us, right? So there's no like cookie cutter. We have to do it this way. I was just hoping to give you a sense of like all the different ways we could do it. And then you just have to get started. So I love it. Um, mm -hmm. All right. And let's see, using a notebook. Yep. We answered that one. I think, did we get everyone's questions? There's so many awesome questions and so many lovely comments and each one of them is appreciated. Oh my gosh, this is fantastic. Uh, Janet, what do you think? Are we all ready to really maximize the use of our notebook? I, I think so. I personally am. I was taking notes during the entire thing. So thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so excited to do some more organizing. I genuinely mean that. Um, it's it's so, so important, especially during this time of year. So and best to start now and keep up with it. But Thank you. Thank you so much, Jamie. This has been an awesome program as usual. Everyone who attended, thank you for joining us. Please, once again, um, feel free to either um, check out the links in the chat um, or visit the Chelmsford Public Library website. We have a blog post with all of Jamie's declutter series programs for this year. All of the upcoming ones are there with the Zoom links um, in order to register for each one individually. Remember, you got to pick the ones you're attending just sign up for all of them. We all know we want to, um, <laughs> but I'm biased. So also another reminder, I know Jamie mentioned it, but next month, first Thursday, May 2nd at 7 p.m., we're having Declutter with Jamie Novak, a digital decluttering, organized and free up storage space. So please join us for that. Um, again, Jamie, thank you as always. This has been awesome. Oh, I'm so glad I see all the lovely comments scrolling through in the chat and you made it run so smoothly. So thank you for that. I'm glad we like this new style with a presentation. Um, we'll be back next time. Bring your devices because we're going to declutter live. So um, that's the plan. And uh, we can't wait to see you then. Thanks, everyone. Be well. Have a good night, everybody. Happy Thanks again, Jamie. <laughs> see you next month. Yeah, so Gianna, you have a question from Janet that's wondering if she can oh, come yeah. to the library if no access, um, can they come to the library to view the program from a library's computer? Absolutely. Yes, you can. I will also actually, um, I know some folks have left, but you should all be getting a recording of this program as well. And it should end up on the library's YouTube channel. So you can check it out there and we can help you at the reference desk. Yay. We all love right. The library. Thanks for everything. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.